We're here at 4 o'clock. I'm Jay Fidel with uh, Governor John Wyhey, and this is his show. He's the host of Talk Story with John Wyhey. I am a guest host, if you will. You I'm are John. a guest host. You're the guest interrogator. <laughs> I am the person that you are now interrogating. So okay. I get to seat on, sit on this seat. You're not going to believe what we're going to talk about, but I'll give you a hint. It was in the newspaper. Uh, among other things, we're going to talk about uh, a, a friend of mine. Thank you. And I thought it might be more appropriate if you ask the questions than if I just talk sure. about it. Well, as uh, people are finding out, uh, we, uh, J. President Clinton, um, is uh, in Hawaii, uh, one of his favorite places in the world, as he's told me more times than, than I care to count. But he just, saw, just came in. It's a surprise to me. I got, a, I got a, uh, an email on... Um, Friday, no, Thursday night. Uh, I'll be uh, in Hawaii tomorrow morning. Uh, <laughs> are you up for anything? You know, like right. uh, let's go golfing or something. And <laughs> it didn't turn out, by the way. He found out landing in Hawaii the same day is you, you don't necessarily want to. He came in from Columbia, where he's doing one of his projects. And he came to address a conference of travel agents and the I don't know if people realize this but the Clinton Foundation has sort of strategically uh, adopted really the uh, travel business as an important development tool for uh, Indeed. various countries all over the world and uh, for two reasons. One, because it actually economically works sure. and people are interested in learning about other cultures and so forth. But also because it is, uh, in his opinion, and, in, and I find that very compelling, uh, that th this, that kind of business actually uh, facilitates uh, cultural understanding. You know? And so the entire speech that he gave, and, and he walked in a room, it was, I don't know, I don't know how many thousand people there, but they were in the thousands, and it was packed. It, it was the Stan Sheriff Center, completely packed, and uh, nobody expected him. And so it was Surprise. kind of fun to watch that, <laughs> yeah. But hanging out was great, you know. Yeah. You know him. I, I've known him for, what, 30-something years. And we, we were we grew up. I mean, we came up the political ladder, so to speak, together. We were governors together. And one of my sure. uh, uh, political moments was uh, when he ran for president of the United States. I was chairman of the Democratic Governors Association, so I had the privilege, really, of organizing uh, Democratic governors for his election. And, uh, oh boy, those, those were exciting times. Yeah, wow, wow. That's a whole new experience. Mm -hmm. And it should come back and, quote, visit you this way. Yeah, and, and, and actually, um, we will have him on this show in the future. And uh, I wish we could have done it today. And so you wouldn't be there having to grill me, you know. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but it just, it just, the logistics just didn't work out, yeah. unfortunately. But... Uh, he wants to, he has been here, he's uh, very interested. Um, we had a chance uh, yet to uh, go visit the Hokulea, for example. And, cool. and you know, the, the, the idea of the Hokulea was to promote not only the Hawaiian uh, or Polynesian uh, celestial navigation um, voyaging, but also to spread the message of what it takes to live on an island to, to, and, and so forth. And so when they were presenting this to, uh, to the president, he was so fascinated, as he always is. He's one of the most intensely um, focused person when he, when he has a subject. You know, he, he, he loves new things. He loves learning. 
And so the, these young people that had actually sailed, every one of them who had at least sailed a thousand miles was there yesterday, and they had a chance to talk to them, to tell them about what it's like to live on a ship, you know, and what the lessons that might have for living on a continent, for living where others live, you know, how to get along and the rest. So it's been a real experience. It's a microcosm for human relations in general. Right. And of course, uh, he and I talked a lot about the political situation in America. And, you know, I, I don't want to be here talking about him, but Jay, if you, if you want to talk about anything. Well, I, I, I would, would like to touch on a few things. I mean, you know, like after the election, everybody was stunned, just falling down stunned. And I'm sure that Hillary Clinton was falling down stunned. And, well, and a lot Bill, of people. Bill had to be falling down stunned. Yeah, I, I guess so. Although uh, a number of us, myself included, and apparently some of the uh, Hillary campaign people actually began to see, I mean, everything seemed to be going correctly. Uh, and, and we would have, be, we would be now a much different country yeah, had we she had won. But, um, but right about the time that Comey made his announcement, things started to, you know, go south. And one of the, uh, well, one of the, the good things that are, are going to happen that people can look forward to is uh, Hillary's writing a book. And I don't know whether that's uh, something that should be announced here, but uh, definitely she's writing a book. I think that's kind of expected. And I hear from the president and from others that it's going to be a blockbuster. It's going to be a book that all of us would like to get our hands on. In fact, one of the things that the uh, the president is doing, uh, President Clinton, is actually, as part of his trip, uh, his daily, I should say, as part of his daily routine on this trip, is to read uh, chapters of the book, helping the publishers and Hillary, uh, you know, um, finalize it. Because they're, they're, it, 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 he told me that uh, actually Hillary was supposed to be with him on this trip. They both love Hawaii. And they were going to, you know, making a speech and having a chance to spend a couple extra days uh, hanging out here was their perfect, it would, be, would have been the, uh, one of the few times that they had a vacation uh, or would have taken a vacation. But then uh, the, the publishers wanted, uh, wanted this book done. So we're going to hear it all. Oh, I can and, see why and, they wanted and, it done. And, and, and I, you know, I, I, I know I intend to get a copy of it. Uh, I do too. <laughs> I'd love to know. <laughs> but, you know, you and I have had a number of shows just talking about where this country is right now, and it is frightening to me. And obviously, uh, you know, in the course of just discussions, not only with, with Bill, but with anybody connected, you know, there's like a new normal going on, and it's frightening. It's like these kinds of crazy type situations uh, are happening so often that we seem to be getting used to it. Right, I agree. And people are becoming complacent about it already. They, they said, I'm so tired of this. I am just going to disengage from it. I'm going to ignore it. This is maybe the worst thing they can do because going forward, we need to pay more yeah, attention, not and, less. Yeah, uh, and it, it was interesting because we actually, you know, and what, what, uh, we talk, you know, he and I share some, some views on uh, the freedom of the press and how important it is that the press actually focus on substantive uh, issues. And, 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 and there's going to, uh, there's been analysis made of this past elections, not only the very last one, which happened to have been the worst in this sense, in, uh, in, on this issue, but uh, but the trend over time of various elections of having the media focus in on sensationalism as opposed to the issue. That's what happened. And so, you know, you, you have hundreds of minutes of time talking about Hillary's emails. And one of the things I'll probably let out of school, I, I you know, much of what we discussed was obviously in confidence, but what I will let out is the idea that she was told more times than once uh, after the election uh, by various reporters that they, uh, they were actually apologizing 
And they, they said, you know, we didn't think you were going to lose, number one. And number two, what sold the papers was the, uh, was the uh, what do you call it, the, the sensational I issues. Yeah. That, what, the, what do you, um, yeah. uh, what's, the, what's the name of those trash magazines that we... Uh, tabloids. The tabloid. It's the tabloid type news. And so they peop even the mainstream media did it. Now it's tabloid every day, and the media is actually put themselves, or this country is in the situation where the media now has to uh, uh, try to try to bring everything back to, to, to issues. Which but it's, it's hard to, them to because hard he's to still, do. Trump is still doing the same thing. And he's still doing the same thing, and it's still becoming, and in, in his case, you know, it's like a daily uh, situation. So I, I worry about the freedom of the press. I agree. And, uh, and I can tell you that uh, the, that's something that uh, even, even somebody like, like, like Bill Clinton's worried about. I mean, we all are worried about where this country goes. Um, yeah, so that was, I've had some really good, obviously, good conversations. Oh, that's <laughs> great that you have the time with him and you can sort of catch up with him because, you know, it's, I mean, I know they've been around and there have been some stories about them since the election, but really it's been quiet from them. Well, you know, and a lot of what happened in the election, in some respects, we as a Democratic Party have to blame ourselves for. I mean, I think there's been a lot of uh, soul searching. Um, we uh, talked about, for example, a lot of our friends who are Republicans in the, um, in the Senate right now. And these are honorable men, you know, uh, Lamar Alexander, Orrin Hatch, oh, even uh, McCain, John McCain, and, and wondering when, when and at what moment do they decide as people that we know they are, you know, uh, and the president knows they are, uh, when they decide that, look, the country is more important than my, my party being in power, and begin to, uh, you know, start to guide the, this presidency a little bit more. Uh, take 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 some responsibility for well, what's happening. Uh, that's obviously an interesting conversation because we know the same person for the same same people yeah. for the same number yeah. of years. You yeah. know, and uh, but I mean, he's a he, he is an, a complete insider. He knows the inside. Well, he also is, he, he's also this, the kind of person that likes to make uh, friends with people who don't agree with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, I mean he, one, really, one of his closest uh, friends right now, and he, he's actually, he actually talks about it, he's kind of proud of it, is the, uh, are the Bushes, both uh, uh, George Bush, uh, the father, and George Bush, uh, jo and George uh, W., mm -hmm. And, and, and part of what his work on the foundation have, has been um, doing things with their foundation, with their work, and, you know, and, and demonstrating that, that, that you don't have to agree on anything. In fact, you can be miles apart in some very strong political situation, but you can all you can treat each other civilly number one number two you can actually work on where you have a common interest and for example he uh, we were discussing the, the story of saving lake tahoe you know and he says as long as we and it's uh, surrounded by politicians and others that have completely different viewpoints but as long as they focused in terms of george w and his dad when they focused on saving the lake, maintaining the lake, making sure that its purity level was, you know, great things were done. Great things can happen. And so yeah. his message today is, you know, we, we need to do some of that. And he's I'll, an elder statesman now, don't you think? Yeah, but he's also a shrewd politician. <laughs> so I, I will tell you that th this is not a person that doesn't have insights. This is not a person that doesn't have instincts. I mean, he... I, I've seen him, you know, and uh, he, he is, I wouldn't mess with him, in other <laughs> words, on one hand. 
But on the other hand, this is a person that always tries to find common ground. And, and um, you know, uh, and he had his own criticism for our party as well. Um, one of the problems Democrats have, as just statistically across this country, is the fact that we don't seem to vote in non-presidential elections, which, by the way, the, you must compliment the Republicans for nationally, yeah. because they come out, and they come out, and they vote in the dog catcher elections, and the local sheriff, and the local mayor, and the, and the like, and we have a tendency to stay home. Yeah, too bad. John, we'll take a short break. This is Governor Thank John Wyhey. We're talking about his friend Bill Clinton, who's here in Honolulu right now, and with whom he spent some time, and uh, we'll talk about his reflections. Uh, they're, they're, they're both uh, reflections. Reflections for both John and Well, Bill. I wish he, he, were, he were here, right? and he has promised us the show. If so there's any consolation, there's a fair chance he's watching now. Well, yeah. Well, he's actually on the phone to some prime minister right now. Okay. Otherwise, he'd be... <laughs> talking to us, but uh, I'm sure he's going to see this. His staff, if you, we mention his name anywhere in the world, his staff will run it down. So We'll be right back after this break. to the game and it's gonna be great early arriving for a little tailgate i usually drink but won't be drinking today because i'm the designated driver and that's okay it's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line keeps him from drinking too much so we can have a great time a little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day i'm the guy you wanna be i'm the guy saving money i'm the guy with the h2o and i'm the guy that says let's go back with uh, John Wahey. He is, he is the true uh, host of the show. I'm the visiting host, and the reason is we're talking about a friend of his who was in town with whom he spent some time, namely uh, former President Bill Clinton. Um, and, you know, I'd like to get to, to, the, to his reaction to the election, if you will. I'd like to get his reaction to what Trump has been doing, because if it bothers me and it bothers you, it must bother Bill, too. Oh, it, it, it obviously does. It obviously does. And, 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 oh, by the way, you know, people should know that the reason why Jay's here is because we do this, you know, like he's done this to me. <laughs> Pull me off the street. We do it to each other. <laughs> we do it. It's cool. But anyway, yeah, of course. Of course, the election was, you know, and one of the main things that, uh, one of the most main upsets, it's not, it's not unique to, to Bill, but it's something that he, obviously was uh, much more knowledgeable of than even myself, and that is that the, um, the, deliberate, the, the deliberate attempt by many uh, people that with, with, with money or with, uh, that were on the other side to uh, lower the bar of discussion, the level of discussion, to, to make sure that uh, we, we focus on, as we've talked about earlier, uh, tabloid news as opposed to, uh, you know, really getting into the issues. Trump was I'm, right down there in the street at the end. Well, if he can do that, he'll win. See, that's how, that's how he wins. It's not he wins good commentary by, on the election. You know, t t whereas if you stuck with the issues, then we'd probably, Hillary would be president right now because yeah. there is nobody, I mean, that I know of, and I know quite a few politicians that are, that would be no more knowledgeable than her yeah. on any issue, I, I, including, uh, you know, even Bill will, will admit that, that, that Hillary, when she makes her mind up, will, f you know, she's a tremendous resource. Big vacuum, though, after the election. She was quiet. She didn't say anything. 
everybody wondered, my, she must be busted over what happened. It was such a surprise, a bad surprise to everyone, really. Uh, well, I think it obviously was for her uh, uh, as well, except that, you know, they knew things were getting tighter at the end. And one of the great mysteries of life is what's, uh, you know, Comey's action. Uh, Comey coming out just before the election. And, um, and I don't want to, I, I know that Hillary's going to talk about this in her book. I'm sure. And so, you know, what, what uh, with numbers and facts of what the impact that had. And actually, some of the motivation behind it. And apparently what it, what it was is that the, uh, Comey actually uh, had a, a rogue unit, really, in New York who was uh, close to Rudy, uh, Rudy, Rudy Giuliani. Giuliani. It was in Trump's camp. Exactly. And so they were pushing uh, some of these issues. And, uh, but it was a matter of political courage. You know, one of my, and I, and I say this with a great deal of admiration for him, one of the disappointments for me uh, in, was the fact that Obama let the issue of the Russian involvement slide and uh and he as opposed to and as you know trump is making a big deal of that now yeah well you know if he didn't do anything why would should we do anything now right and, and, and but the reason why a lot of people apparently didn't step forward with some of this stuff was because they sincerely believed that trump would never win an election Right. Why make it dirtier than it was? Why make it dirtier than it was? Yeah. But all of that is going to be... Now, we, uh, I, when you discuss that, uh, that particular incident with Obama, you, you need to do it with the caveat that he really wanted Hillary to be president. So it's not a matter of him you know, playing. I mean, it's, it was a judgment call based on the idea that the entire world didn't think that uh, yeah. this guy was going to win. He was win. standing aside. He didn't want to get yeah, the Yeah, because fight. what he, he, and it was a terrible dilemma, because on one hand, if he did uh, r report this, the involvement of, of Russians in the, as, uh, and by the way, he knew that as a fact in September. So you're not talking about some late arrival. And that's what Trump keeps bringing up. Well, what Clinton did was try to stop the Russians from doing that without being, I mean, not Clinton, but Obama, without making it political, without making it look like he was doing something political. Uh, in hindsight, everybody can second guess it. But I, I know for those of us who, who would have loved to see this issue surface a little earlier, uh, you know, that, that didn't help. But the bigger issue, the bigger issue, maybe, and this I have discussed uh, extensively with, uh, with the president and, and others, is the deliberate uh, strategy of voter suppression that those that support Trump and, 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 and in many sense, the Republican agenda are beginning to participate in. And it's this attempt and they're justifying it uh, on the basis of, you know, we've got to make sure that only good Americans vote, kind of. You know, we want to make sure you're a citizen. And, and so you say, well, but the trend has been the other way, for example. You want to encourage young people to vote. Well, should we have a lot of ignorant young people voting? Ooh. You know, and, and, and that kind of thought. So why should we uh, make it easy for these people who may be irresponsible? Or, you know, you start classifying people who you don't want. And in some of the states that people thought would have been uh, more strongly democratic in the, primary, in the presidential election, there were hundreds of thousands of people uh, uh, deleted from the uh, voter rolls. Disenfranchised. Disenfranchised, for one reason or another, not having a driver's license. And a lot of these things are now, uh, these requirements are coming up to the Supreme Court. 
Supreme Court, fortunately, is starting to s uh, knock, knock some of them down, or yeah. the appellate but court. It was, a, it was a national campaign. Oh, oh, yes. oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, and it was it, at the time uh, of the election. And it, by, by the way, you got to give them credit. Now, they, in fact, they did such a good job that they elected Donald Trump. I mean, it didn't <laughs> matter who was running, in a sense, you know. But they, fir they did a great job gerrymandering the country, and I don't think that's uh, something that... Um, is debatable. I mean, it's already been the, the, the United States Supreme Court that says, stop it, you can't keep doing that kind of gerrymandering. And the second thing that they did were these voter suppression uh, programs. Now, they didn't all do that six months before the last election. They did it for the decade before. Yeah. And one of the problems, and you and I have talked about this, but one of the problems that progressives have is that they never take care of business. Right. We spend a lot of time talking about issues, but we don't get there in the mud and actually organize voters, get out there and, and make sure that people are, you know, we get very unhappy with the Hawaii state legislature, and yet we don't, we're the least likely to participate uh, in an election. Well, I, you know, the thing is that Trump is different than any president we've ever oh, had. Oh, yeah, of course. And and under him, you know, all kinds of hostile things have happened, all kinds of roll back, in fact, pull out the wings on democracy, I would say. And Bill Clinton was one of those, pr I, you know, he does share some common points with uh, W and with uh, oh, yeah. uh, Bush uh, Sr., and with other presidents well, Bush, of our Bush time. Senior and Bush Senior uh, and, and W never tried to restrict voting. Right. And that's the difference. And Bill Clinton, you know, who is here, who you know, who you've talked to, can tell you the difference between all the presidents before and this one. And it oh, yeah. bothered uh, him a lot. Oh, oh, of course. Of yeah, course it yeah. does. Because, you know, say what you like. And I was very opposed to, uh, obviously, I mean, I, I helped Bill Clinton beat uh, Bush Senior. I was did everything I could to make sure that uh, that uh, you know that we we supported anybody running against George, uh, George W, including uh, Gore and the rest of it. But and, and by the way, you know everybody does gerrymandering to some degree. I mean the Democrats get it if we have a chance. I'm sure we've done it in Hawaii, you know, but not to the degree it was done before. But what no one has really did really did is this systematic suppression of voters as a strategy, as something you put out there. We need to do something. Democrats need to wake up. I mean, you know, in a sense, we got what we deserve. It's a huge issue, and the Democrats could rebuild public confidence by getting on that issue. Well, it's kind of sad. I, I'm up. going to say something. It is kind of sad for our party, in a sense, when the most important Democrat is not even a Democrat. And that is Bernie Sanders. You know, something is the juxtaposition. Something is wrong, and so we I, I, we got to get back. And one of the one of the interesting things, one of the great things about the, the Clinton early years with Bill, when we were all you know neophyte Clintonites, so we say, <laughs> was the Reagan had taken over the country and had moved the country from Jimmy Carter and Lyndon Johnson's uh, war on poverty type of dem democracy to something closer to uh, a lot more conservative. So we were in the process of losing elections like crazy. So when Bill ran, we had to present an agenda that appealed to everybody. And so that meant not just welfare as a support network, but job opportunity. And sometimes I think that in this day and age, we're no longer presenting uh, policies that, that resonate with the entire community. No. Yeah. And, uh, and that's our fault. But it's an opportunity, too. Yeah, you, can't blame, you, to can't, you can't blame Trump. But what yeah. you can blame Trump for is he's a master of divide and conquer. Yeah. In fact, uh, I, I mean, again, you know, I'm going to say something, and maybe uh, it's on the borderline of uh, talking out of school, but basically one of the things that happened is at one, <laughs> what, uh, what the president told me is that he's, he's, gotten, he's known Trump for years. I mean, as a businessman and as somebody who is just, you know, acting the way he acted, 
he's acting in the private sector. And apparently uh, one, one of these issues came up and immediately Trump tweets out something and blames Clinton, right? And then he calls him up. And he calls Clinton up. He says, ah, you know. I was only Bill, kidding. <laughs> yeah, kind of. You know, I was only kidding. Um, uh, you know, uh, wh what I'm dealing with is an angry uh, po po uh, population, you know, a an angry public. And so, frankly, uh, Bill, I, I say some of these things because uh, I, I know they're angry, but I don't want them angry at me. So I give them a target to get angry at. And he actually had this it's conversation. the worst kind of demagoguery. I don't know what else you call it except demagoguery. Yeah. You know? And so, anyway. Well, John, I mean, this is, uh, you know, the election left a hole in all of our hearts. Yeah. It's an incomplete. We, we uh, don't know how Hillary felt then, really, or how she feels now. We don't know how Bill felt, really. You more, you more than most, you know how he, he felt. Um, but uh, I think we need to see that book. I yeah, I, I, really I, I think I, I would we, love we, to see that. As a country, that. we need that book. And, and we need it, uh, you know, we need it to, well, l let me just say this, you know, um, there is Bill, the, obviously, the, the, the political guru and tactician and, and participant. But there's also Bill, the father, you know, Bill, the husband. And I, I really think that, you know, he, um, he lost an election, by the way. He was elected governor one term, lost the next time, and then won again. And so it's not like he hadn't lost. But I think that this probably affected, Hillary's losses probably affects him more. Sure. Because you can't, you know, it's your family, and you just, you just get so worked up about not being able to, to respond. And in you hate sense. to see unfairness. Oh, yeah. But I tell you what he's very proud of, though, and we also talked about that, is that Chelsea has two beautiful grandchildren, <laughs> which is more than I have. But, you know, um, yeah. So anyway, he, I, you know, he enjoyed, uh, he obviously loves Hawaii, and he enjoyed meeting uh, people at the Hokulea, and, you know, and he will be on our show in the future. All so right. Looking we forward to that. We can ask him uh, ourselves. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks so much for coming down. Thank Let you. Let him be me, me be your host. <laughs>